picking up brushes today is a good thing. Let's see if I can remember how to work this thing. Uh, how does this work? Uh, there we go. Um, yep, that appears to be working. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and well, mostly gentlemen, I would imagine. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has been the week that was. Um, sorry about it last night. Um, I thought, you know, I'd get a half an hour's kip in before uh, coming on and doing my stream, because I was up at like half past four in the morning or something. Um, and that turned into uh, a few hours, which was, you know, not ideal for trying to do a stream. But we're here now, and we're going to do something uh, involving scenery. Now, I had a few ideas for stuff I've printed off. Um, uh, sort of a Age of Sigma High Elf type obelisk thing. Um, well, I've got a few of them, actually. Some of which I've, I've failed prints, which I've tried to patch together with green stuff badly. Green stuff's not properly cured, so I probably won't do anything with that one yet, but no, we'll put that one aside. Likewise, that one is rubbish. I will put that aside, fix that and do it properly later. These apparently are okay. Still leaking resin a bit out the bottom. Because, um, yeah, I didn't account for these things filling up with resin because, um, you know, I'm, I'm a noob at this something. I should really have put a hole in the top. So, that's it. That's the, uh, imagine that's the build plate as it gets pulled out of the resin. The, the resin pours out of the hole in the bottom. And you just stick a cap on the end. And that's what you do. That stops your, your hollow thing getting filled with resin. Anyway, lesson learned. Uh, and I've also got this thing, which is um, probably what I'm going to paint, because it will take me a little while. And I think the way I'm going to paint it is slightly on brand for what's coming out soon through Games Workshop, as has been announced. So we'll get started with that. How are we all doing out there? Quiet echo. Quiet echo. Well, it could be because I've got my door closed. And there will be a slight echo. Because I'm in a small office. If I open the door, the cat can get in. But it might reduce the echo a bit. How's that? rocking back and forth from on my chair because you know that's what I want I do that's how I roll right okay oh cruelly distracted with echoes and things let's get the airbrush switched on looks so much better if you use the switch you know oh no 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 don't be clogged airbrush I cleaned you and everything. Might be alright. Run a bit of water through it and see how we get on. And there's stuff coming out, that's good. That's good, we might get away with it. Tip the water out. Put the airbrush flow and prove it in just a tiny little bit you need a few drops of this that's probably too much there we go that'll do I don't know what's in the airbrush improver but it improves the flow of the paint as one might expect and we are going to start with our favourite primer which I should have shaken first oh you can tell I haven't done one of these for three years or whatever it is. Right. And there comes the black stuff. That's good. Right, okay, right. I think we're gonna do a nice glowing ish crystal on a tree, because that's kinda of what that represents. I think this sort of tells a story in its own right, doesn't it really? Yeah, I like that weird sort of 
sort of corrupted tree almost, isn't it? Well, let's get on with it. Let's see what it turns into. <laughs> I think you see my problem with doing scenery at the moment is it has to be kind of setting agnostic if that makes any kind of sense because that's just the thing I made up yeah that's just the thing I made up but it makes sense to me because we live in the age of battle maps. Now, battle maps can be anything from um, a city to a, um, a forest grove to grassy plains to deserts to badlands to nuclear blasted tundra to I don't know whatever, which kind of limits what you can do unless you're going to paint loads and loads and loads of scenery for every possible battle map you've got kind of limits what you can do in terms of weathering and weathering is in my opinion what sets the, the scenery off and really set, puts it in place in the uh, on the battlefield um, so I'm going to have to try and make it a bit Battlefield agnostic. So generic, I suppose. That would stop me making up words, wouldn't it? I'll get some paint on this as well. There you are. There's some resin come out. Get some paint on this. And if, if we've got time at the end, I'll see what I can do with this. If I, if I knew this was going on a desert, a desert thing that would guide my um, colour choices, if I knew it was going to be in a woodland setting, I could put moss and lichen and stuff on it and make it look green and weathered. And but we just don't know. We just don't know. So we're going to have to go with for this probably generic. Pile sandstone. I'll try and make it look as much like stone as we can. And just set aside put it, making it look like stone in a particular situation. Hello all, how are we doing? Hi Kevin, hi Jamie, hi Mick. Mick, you're always here. You're here more often than I am, so you know that's saying something. Ken, welcome back. This is me just using up the, the last, last of the uh, primer in my ever. Waste not, want not. That's not right. Okay, let's pop that over there. Go be free over there, and you go be free. Can we get a last coat on here out of the airbrush? No, no, we can't. Oh well. Right, are you nearly dry? Eh, dry enough for government work. Right. Give the airbrush a bit of a clean now. Because I don't think. Oh, I might use it a bit later on. But just for speed rather than actual. No, no, actually, let's not. Let's put the airbrush away. Because as much as I love my airbrush, I need to be able to demonstrate that I can do things without the airbrush. Show different ways of doing things, new, exciting ways. That the little people like yourselves can do. Because obviously, clearly, I'm a master pro painter. <laughs> uh, 
airbrush cleaner. Uh, right, I need to properly dismantle this airbrush and give it a good old deep clean. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Uh, there we go. There we go. I'll leave that with some cleaner in it to let it sit and think about what it's done. Spelled me for last time. Right, airbrush off. Pardon me. Right. Airbrush off, dry brush on. Um, I think that probably ought to do. It's, a, it's an old size 12. Um, I know a lot of people swear by Artis Opus's um, uh, what's the word? Purpose-built dry brushes, but for dry brushing, for my for my dollar, you can't do much better than um, just a plain old makeup brush, and you can get loads of these for maybe five, ten quid on, on Amazon, and just throw them away as they get as they get used. You know, nice soft bristles on that one. That's what you want. Sometimes, sometimes you want stiff bristles like that. But again, that's a makeup brush. It doesn't cost you 30 quid. Anyway. Um, <laughs> he's going to make a living. That's how he does it, you know. Can't fault him for that, but... Too rich. Too rich for my blood. So I will look for other ways. And I will tell other people about those ways to achieve similar results. Because that's the kind of happy-go-lucky fella I am. Right, okay. I am going to use some paint to put on the miniature because that's what you're here to see. Right, okay, I'm going to use dark stone, I think, because I used this on my uh, Sylvaneth. Well, wow, that's proper gacked up. Right, give me a moment. Um, let's get that lid off. Can I get some, get some medium in there? That's a medium. That's not medium, that's large. Oh! I'll be here all week, try the veal. Let's dip a bit of that in there because that is getting a bit little, little bit on the, on the dry side. Uh, you know, just the nozzle from that is, is there. And, um, it seems to want to be there, it seems happy there, so uh, why fight it? And to the Wordy Gig machine over here, the thing that goes <laughs> like that. <laughs> if you don't know what this thing is, that's what this thing looks like. And you put put the thing on the top, and the thing goes <laughs> and you get a um, you get a vortex. Artis Opus also sells these for. A, 11 bajillion quid. This cost about 30. You don't need anything better than that. But I do recommend getting one. You can even get one for from Artis Opus, I won't object. we got nobody else nobody else knew if you knew say hello I know we'll say hello back because that's how interaction works or so I'm told by my therapist I don't have a therapist not a real one anyway I got one in my head I still don't think they're real uh, right, okay, so a little bit of paint on the brush, get most of the paint off. Contrary to popular belief, you don't want the brush completely dry, so make sure you get a little bit of moisture on the brush still, otherwise all you're putting onto the, onto the miniature is pigment, and that's good for nobody. And then you just brush that over the top, picking out all the detail. 
one of these techniques we either people seem to dislike it for some reason I don't know why people turn their noses up at it like um, using washers people turn their noses up at using washers for some reason as well usually the same people you know, don't use washers it's not right for them is it? it doesn't look accurate no. don't you drive it it's too imprecise me, 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 me. and that's exactly what they sound like I'm in the camp of do what you want, how you want, in a way what gets the job done. And if that's dry brushing, I mean, we can even see the change there, but there is a little bit. It's subtle. It's subtle, and that's what you want, frankly. All those painting fascists that say, oh, don't dry brush, it's, a, it's for noobs. No, 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 no. no. No, no, no. I not, may not be very good, but I'm not a noob, and I'm dry brushing. People still say noob. Look at that. And that started off black like that, and now it's not black like that. Hold that, like that. Uh, what do I want now? I want a little bit of dark grey. I'm going to use Necromancer Cloak. Um, maybe Scaven Blight Dinge, I don't know, something like that. I'm going to put that down on my whatever the previous paint I used was Dark Stone. Which may also be scaven blood blood dinge. I don't know. I've looked at a color, couple of color, color charts, and they seem fairly undecisive on the uh, on the matter. So I mix that up, in a slightly lighter shade, get most of the paint off, but still, you know, a little bit on the moist side because we like it moist. If you keep things moist, it makes things easier. Yeah. Um, anyway, going over that once again. With that, and I'll use the makeup brushes on the actual crystal. I'm getting a, I need, need to get more subtle effect. Now the other thing to bear in mind is we're painting scenery here. You don't really want to be outshining the miniatures. You just want it, you know, looking good and in place and suitable. But if you're spending if you're spending three or four hours painting scenery, so it's Games Workshop standard, um, Golden Demon winning tree crystal thing here, then uh, you're kind of missing the point. Unless it's for a diorama or something, which this isn't. It's for the table. And probably not my table. Anyway. Right. Um, yeah, should we take that up a, up a notch again? It's not what I want. That's uniform grey. Get a bit of that going on. Come on. One thing I will say about Army Painter paints is they do come a bit thick, which is good because it means you use also use less of them. But it does mean you, when you're painting miniatures with them, you don't really do need to thin your paints. Right, actually, let's get um, 
let's get that involved on that there we go so we've got a little bit of paint on that light coverage You notice I haven't zenithed this, um, and you know what? I've noticed that too. Um, I'd love to say that was that was intentional, but it wasn't. But I think we can make it work. We can make it work to our advantage. And that's what it's all about. There we go. What am I going to do with them? What do these things look? like to you need a pointing device pointing device oh, having a room full of brushes right pointing device what do we think these things look like they look like peas in a pod to me but that doesn't really fit with the whole tree vibe don't know don't know By the way, if there is a technique or something you want to see me do, please do uh, drop it in the chat or drop it in the comments if you're watching after the fact. And I'll see if I can put something together that will demonstrate that technique for you, be it a live stream or um, uh, a standalone video. No, I'm not precious. I will definitely play for the crowd. If you just want to listen to me witter whilst you paint, that is also good. But I do find myself running out of ideas for what to do for these things, so um, some help would be great. Some suggestions. Um, one of these days, I will go back and paint an actual Games Workshop miniature again. Um, which is, you know what? I've not done that for about a month and a bit. Plasma glowing technique. You know what? I can do that for you. Um, not on this though. Um, what do you mean, like? Um, you mean like that? Yeah? That sort of thing? Oh, that's easy. Yeah, I can show you that. Um, In fact, just let me take the paint off that a bit. Um, there we go. Maybe we'll do it on that one, yeah? How about that? Uh, yeah, if we get time, we'll do that. Uh, but I want to get this done. Do, 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 do. Um, Damn it all. What was I going to do? Oh yes. Oh yes. That's what I was going to do. I was going to... I was going to wish I prepared for this. But then I always do that. No, we won't do that in this... We're not going to do... We're not going to paint that again in this video. We will do a video for that. Because we turned off the airbrush. It's thinking about what it's done. And we don't want to disturb it. We don't want to be, it to become angered. Alright, okay. Uh, that's a glob of generic plain titanium white globby paint. Globby, Mr. Globby. Um, right. Do you know what? I had a bigger makeup brush on this. But I don't know where it's gone. Oh, there it is. Look, looking right at me. I think we'll use that for this. Put that down there. That's a Games Workshop dry brush, which I use for nothing. Um, I 
could use that for pointing at things, couldn't I? Because I don't use it for actually painting. Right, okay. Okay, we've got the, getting the zenith all going on here. Wang, wang, wang. Can I say that on YouTube? I'm too late, I just did. Get the zenith all going on here, just to pick out. The rocky, crystally bits. I might actually have to use the airbrush in a little bit after I've done the uh, done this. After I've got the base colours down, because. I try, depending on where we are time wise and what's going on. I might try and get a bit of OSL put on there. Um, there's little bits of rock and stuff down the bottom here. I'm not sure I actually want that to be the same colour as the crystal, but it needs a little bit of definition on there. Okay. Okay. Of course, we're going in with the grisaille style zenithal here. Progressively lighter brushing on here. So you get progressively lighter highlights. And because we're using this technique, we're probably going to end up using contrast paints, but then you know what? When have, I, when have I ever not used contrast paints on one of these videos? I probably need to demonstrate that I don't need to use them. But then, what have I got to prove? What have I got to prove? Things to prove to all the people that go, mm, don't use contrast paints, mm, they're for noobs, and then proceed to use them. Uh, let's throw some, because we've got a load of white paint, so we might as well throw a load on there, on here as well. Wham, look at that. Boop. Instant. Instant contrast, and brings out the detail. Wham. There we are. I mean, throw some wash on that once it's dry, and that's all almost ready to go. If you wanted a rough and ready, rough and ready stone texture, let's get some on this one as well. Those of you who are struggling with the concept of dry brushing, that's what this is. And this is why it's not frightening. It is one of the first fancy techniques I learned way back in the dawn time during the dreaming when you could still get five miniatures, lead miniatures at that, proper lead, you know. Lose more kids from eating miniatures that way. For £2.50, I think it was. Back in the heady days of five, uh, no, five pounds, that was it, yeah, five pounds for three rhinos. Three, and seven for two land raiders. Oh God, backlog. Um, <laughs> uh, I've got a couple of years worth of painting backlog, I dare say. <laughs> no, that's probably a little excessive. No, I probably, if I, if I worked at it, I've probably got two or three months of solid painting stacked up in, in plain plastic at the moment. Right, uh, that's still claggy, we don't want that. Um, paint in the meantime whilst that's drying. Um, um, 
I don't know. Somebody sing me a song. Entertain me, damn it. What, originally? Somebody's asking me. Mick, Mick is asking me what, what got me into the hobby. Um, peer pressure. <laughs> I hang, out, I hang out with the right sort of people, or the wrong sort of people, depending on your outlook. Way back in um, 1900 and frozen to death. Um, no, not quite frozen to death. 88, certainly not frozen, freezing to death. Certainly not very warm, but, you know. Yeah, um, fell in with some people at school that did this sort of thing, and I thought, oh, that looks fun. Um, and then the rest is kind of history. Um, I was painting from about 88, 89 until about 92, 93-ish, maybe 94. When I went to university, I stopped painting because, you know, other interests. Um, yeah, so there's about a five, five-ish, four, five-ish year period of me painting. I actually worked for Games Workshop at one point for my sins, but only in the store and only as a sort of Saturday job. Um, and then I did my turn at university, and then fast forward some years, uh, and then lockdown happened, or it looked like lockdown was about to happen, and. Um, I picked up a paintbrush again and suddenly here I am, you know. And I think it was the right decision because I don't think I probably would have made it through lockdown without this to to keep me entertained. Um, without this and certain YouTubers and... Yeah. I think it was generally a positive thing because I'm still here, so that's a good thing. Um, right. Sorry, I'm a bit dis discombobulated at the moment. Um, just looking for paints and stuff. Another sip of tea whilst I'm here. Still not sponsored by Yorkshire Tea. How old was I when I started painting? Ooh. 15? 14? 15? Something like that. Right. Um, 14, 15. Yeah, it must have been about that. But I've never been very good. I'm better now. Even by my own admission, I'm better now. Um, but I was never very good. I was always adequate. I could put things on the table that didn't look terrible. But that was compared to other people who were similarly not very good. And in a time when we didn't have YouTube, I know. We didn't have YouTube. We barely even had the. No, we didn't have the internet when I started. At least not in a form that was uh, suitable for sharing other than anything other than dirty ASCII pictures at very very slow speeds. Not that I did that, or anyone I know did that. But apparently that's what it's for. There's a song about it and everything. Um, yeah, sorry, wiping things up. Um, where was I? What was I talking about? I was talking about, um, oh yes, before the internet, before YouTube. There was a time before the internet and before YouTube. I know there are some people, probably not in this channel, that, that won't believe me. That that was ever a thing. But it was. Can you see where I'm going with this yet? Hmm? With the green crystal. Can you, can you see? Yes, yes. Um, so, painting techniques were very much shared by word of mouth because you know that was the only way to share anything back then. 
uh, and and we, we we wore onions on our, our, our lapels because that was the fashion at the time. Um, so you were very much limited in terms of learning new te techniques to what people had learnt in your in and around your local games workshop. So you ended up in a situation where most of people's stuff in a game, given games workshop looked pretty similar. Um, differing levels of skill now, but they all used the same techniques. They all had goblin green bases because that was the fashion at the time. Goblin green bases, because that was the colour of the wargaming tables, and all the wargaming tables were painted goblin green. And flock, ooh, if you had flock on your bases, you were some sort of virtuoso. Shall I tell a lie? I think I'd had a brief stint of painting miniatures back in very early 2000s like really early 2000s 2001 2002 but it didn't last that long um yes because i was living down in south wales at the time and i had to do something to numb the pain um apologies to anyone from south wales but it's not my fault you're from South Wales. I don't think I have that much to apologise for. All I can say is you know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> I say the words new and port. You will instantly know. In fact, Cred, I know you will know. Because you were there, man. You know. Um... Oh, there it is. Something I did pre-prepare, and I, did, I kind of lost where it was. I got some new kitchen roll for the wiping of brushes. For the brush wiping of. Okay, so that looks a lot darker on camera than it. Wow, that really does look dark on camera. That looks nothing like it does in real life. Good heavens. That looks. Proper dark. See if I can fiddle with that and get it a bit more lifelike. No, not that. Y yes, exactly, Cren. <laughs> um, configure video. Let's see if we can get the. Buff around with these things. Saturation. Hope oh, that's down. Up. Oh, no. White balance. No. Now we'll leave the white balance alone. Brightness. Up. Oh, no. Down. Right. Oh, no. It's just going to look bad. Cancel. Right. Okay. Trust me. It looks a lot brighter in person. It's not quite as black. Let's get that out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. But it might be all right. It might be all right. I'm going to put some pictures up. I'm going to take a picture of it now. Whilst on the stream. And of course, I can't use the biometrics because I've got paint on my fingers. I mean, who knew, right? Get paint on, the, on your fingers and it won't recognise your fingerprints anymore. Okay. Uh, scared a picture of it. I mean, that doesn't look. That's not true to life either, but it's truer to more life than, um, than what's on the, the screen there. And I'm going to stick that up in my Discord because that's how I roll. Stick it in the web gallery. 
There we go. And that's just one coat of um, speed paints that loads through. And if you're not in my uh, Discord, good lord, why not? You know, it is a place to be for some people. Not many people. That's because people aren't there. And that makes me sad. Um, tell you what, if I get an invite and copy it, what I can do is I can I can stick my hand and wiggle it around like that, and I can also um, add a source of text, and I will stick the text in there, and I will stick. Yeah, short sure, area or whatever. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Text. It should be somewhere on the screen. Why is it nowhere on the screen? Ah, there it is. Nope. Nope. Oh, I used to have a thing for doing this, and it used to work, and then I stopped it. Most unprofessional we're fiddling around with these things whilst I'm trying to stream. But you know what? You get what you pay for at the end of the day, I think. Um, no, I'm just going to ignore that. Right, okay. I'll stick some. Uh, no, I'll, no, I can't do that, can I? I was going to say, I was, <laughs> was going to say, I'll put the invite in my Discord channel, but that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> The new Sylvaneth. Uh, what do I think of the new Sylvaneth? I love the new Sylvaneth. Uh, I think the big thing, um, Lady of Thorns or something like that. Um, Maiden of the Thorns. Something of the spiky things. I think she's brilliant. And I will definitely be getting uh, one of them. Uh, I'm not as sold on the weird bug cavalry things, but I'm going to have to get some of them, or use a proxy, because I think they will fill a role in Sylvaneth Army that doesn't currently get filled very well, um, being fast moving DPS. Um, so that was some Phoenix Yellow going into the, um, going into the uh, speed paint. Yeah. So they fill a role which is currently lacking from the um, from the Sylvaneth list a little bit. Um, as do the um, as do those flittering fairy archer things, which also look weird. But I'm going to have to get because they fill a role. But yeah, it's hopeful. I am hopeful for things. They seem to be. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but with the things like the uh, the night haunts and the silver earth now, and I dare say we'll probably see it with the Skaven. Um, hence this thing. Um, they seem to be going down a missile weapon kind of direction again. Because you know the the, the night haunts had nothing, the, the, the Sylvaneth had very little, and then suddenly we've got, I think both of the new units, the Sylvaneth particularly, have missile weapons options. So yeah, yeah, I'm just mixing it. Oh cool, that looks black as anything, but it's not. It's really not. I'm going up in colour, not down. <laughs> That should be brighter. I'm gonna, I will get this camera sorted at some point because it's showing the light bits is dark. Cren, help! What's doing? Because it can't be. Um... It can't be overexposing the uh, thing because it never did it before. Mm-hmm. 
Get a bit more yellow in there. So this is definitely yellow, yeah? You can see a little bit of... There's definitely something going on with the camera. Oh, oh well. Press on. There we go. See, that's definitely yellow. And you get that mixed in there. And suddenly it goes black. See, although that isn't right, that's probably a different... That's a good shade of yellow there. Or... I'd say that was Goblin Green I've created there again. I'm just going over the tops of that again very lightly. Just to bring out the uh, warp stone kind of feel to it. Brush it over the uh, over the leaves, uh, the branches holding it as well. I'm still going to make a decision about what to do with these globby bits. I don't know what I'm doing with that, them at all. Um, okay. So that's good. I think what we'll do is we'll hit that up with a final layer of pure yellow. It's obviously going to be mixed in with the green. For a very light green. There's nothing to be taken a walk in. And if you get that reference, I'll be very impressed. I know someone who may or not may not be watching this will get to the, get the reference to a walk in the light green. God help us. Actually, no. Let's take it up a little bit more. Let's get some. This is this is moon dust, which um, is a weird colour. I've got, well, I wouldn't even be able to guess what uh, Games Workshop colour this mimics. It does its own thing, and it is a strong and independent paint, and it don't need no Games Workshop. All right. Um, however, I need the means of getting into it because I've left it too long. And that's how I roll. Splooch. Come on. Splooch. Should really... There we are. That'll do. Um, that one over there. What's this I am painting Moog? I am painting Moog. I am painting... Moog is painting this. Which, um, now I look at it, it looks really suspect. But it's not. Honestly, it's not. It is uh, a thing that I printed off from an STL that I found that was free, I think. Least ways, I can't remember where I got it. I think it might be from Fleshcraft Studios. Um, and it's a, sort of a crystal being held up by a tree. And I thought, well, that kind of tells a story. So I'll paint one of them. And then maybe, at some point, get around, getting around to telling a story with it. Um, if only I knew somebody who uh, who played AOS and likes to tell stories, narrative stories, and uh, might make use of some scenery. If only. Um, but the camera is doing something weird and overexposing things and making us look absolutely terrible. So I apologise for that. What I'm seeing looks great. <laughs> um, right, let's get some actual white going on there just to get the absolute Pinnacle highlights. Just dump that on the moon dust. 
brighten that up. It's just literally very lightly over the top, just picking out little bits of just on the very ridges. Seriously cool. Aha! That looks cool. Right. Now, I mean, you could leave it at that. And that looks pretty cool. But I'm not going to leave it at that. Because I've still got time left. Still got loads of time left. Oh, heavens, I've got loads of time left. What am I going to do with another hour? How am I going to... How am I going to milk this for another hour's worth of content? I don't think it's possible. Um, but we're going to try. Alright. Um, yeah, if anything, this should, um, this should demonstrate how quickly you can... Oh, that's actually not too bad for... Have I got low light comp or something on this camera? Let me fiddle with the camera for a bit. Talk amongst yourselves. Compensation. Okay. Better. I think we found the problem. It's not completely gone, but I think we found the problem. Yeah, I'll faff around with that and try and get a better idea of what's going on with it. Right, we've still got the problem of these little peas in a pod there. What we're going to do with them, I'm thinking. And they get, I'm getting a kind of a Nurgle garden vibe off, off them, excuse me. So, on nom tree treasure. What are you talking about, Mick? What are you talking about? You have lost the plot. So this is just literally using spare paint off the palette. The white, white coloured stuff. And I'm just going to go over this with some special effects paints in a minute. Um, I'll take a rain check on that. I don't know what I'm doing doing for for that particular weekend. So I'll let you know. sort of mm. here's what it is Let's mess around with the camera again. Expose it a little bit. Um, is that better? Kind of.
a little bit better. It's still a bit pixelated though. Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to do that live on the live stream because that's not what you pay to see. If you pay to th see things, Mick, this isn't what you pay to see. So we won't we won't do that. I will take a proper picture of this later and stick it up somewhere. I don't want to think about this in terms of sticking it up things, but um, no. Uh, what am I going to use now? Um, oh yes, we were going to go down the route of nurgling it, weren't we? Yes, we were, because why not? Um, do -do 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 -do. Um, no, not that. going on there. Um. Red wash over green. Kind of gives the impression of of blood, kind of. And this is um, army painter shade I'm using, which has a a natural gloss quality to it, only slight, but it's definitely there, which does help if you're kind of creating that wet bloody look and then we are probably going to use some green stuff world bile yeah the colors are terrible hmm okay Clearly, I've damaged something. I had this cool idea of setting up a different channel and doing something different on it. Uh, so I was messing around in um, OBS Studio, trying to create another profile, and I didn't quite manage it. So I think I might have messed something up with the camera because I had to expand this from a a tiny little camera in the corner of the screen that would have been a, a picture of me whilst I was in theory playing computer games or something like that, for example. Um, so I think that might be part of the problem. Um, we'll have it sorted for next time. I say we. Not as anyone else involved in this channel. E, I will have it. I will have it sorted. The YouTubers do that though, don't they? We'll do this, we'll do that, we thank you. And it's usually just some guy in a basement. I mean the big guys they have um, they have cameramen and, and you know actual talent. But um yeah, the rest of us sort of, uh... Right, okay, so this is um green stuff well bile and I'm sort of slathering it all over there. That this really does have a a gloss effect on it. And I think what we'll do is we'll get some vomit on there as well, which is the same sort of stuff but yellowy. Oh, that's all clenched up. Oh, look at that. Ugh. Looks horrible before it goes on a miniature. Right, okay. Come on. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Right, so there we go. There we are. Right. And this can just be liberally laid on there.
sort of a corrupted tree stump type thing. But still sort of fairly, fairly agnostic. I mean, it wouldn't, well, it would, would kind of look out of place in a desert, but. Yeah, burn that bridge when we get to it. I think the idea for this one is not to use it in a desert, but it'll work in most other settings. Grasslands, ruins, all sorts of stuff. Let's set that aside for a bit and uh, see if we can't get a bit going on in this. Right, what we're going to use, we're going to use some of that pallet bone. Pallet bone. One of these things when you these use these speed paints when you squirt them out, they don't look anything like they do on the bottle. I just get a little bit of faith. Because when you actually put them on a model, they also look like nothing like the actual bottle. So you have your faith dashed against the rocks, which is the proper place for faith. It's a good amount of contrast going on in there. Some lovely detail on that, I think. Right. Something odd is going on with this paint, it's frothing. It shouldn't be frothing. I don't know why it's frothing. Shouldn't be doing it. Where's it getting that red colour from? Oh! <laughs> yeah. Oh well, that works. It's a little bit of extra colour. Something I was doing whilst I was waiting for paint to dry on this. Hopefully the paint has dried now. <sighs> right, next. Next, next, next. Right, um, shall we get some... Shall we get some varnish on that? Or should we get a bit more weathering going on? I think. Therefore... I'm looking for a thing. When I find the thing, I will know. And the thing when it has been found will know that it has been found. And it will rue the day. Ha ha ha! Right. 
Do, 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 do. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I could use a bit of... Ooh. No, we tried that before. Let's not do that. That's the same thing. Right. I'm going to reach for... I'm going to reach for this, I think. Tesseract. Ooh. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, why is it doing that? Tesseract glove. Right. Oh, oh. Stand by your beds, people. I think I know what might be going on. <laughs> I am simultaneously clever and stupid. <laughs> right, okay. I know what I did there. You don't need to. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? You see how you see how what I was saying about it being actually a lot brighter in person? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, if the if there wasn't a filter on the camera trying to make green look invisible, then it might have come off a lot better. <laughs> Cuz no, I didn't have a green screen filter on it at all. No, no. I would have remembered that. <laughs> Oh, right. Okay, so I'm just going in there with a bit of Celia Green shade here, just to get a bit of extra contrast going on. Deepen down and blend. Now you can actually see what's going on. I might actually get some more white going on on in there, just on the the extremities. Let's get some. Let's darken down those those branches a bit. I say a bit, a lot. I'll get some normal oil on those those branches actually as well, which will. Change the hue slightly. Right. Is that or is that not looking like a massive chunk of warp stone? That any newly rebased Skaven army, for example, might want to get their hands on. But any new, oh, I don't know, Selvan F army might want to get out of their forest, but you know, not into the hands of Skaven because that'd be bad. You know, that sort of thing. Is that not what that looks like? Because oh, that, that looks like an awful lot like that to me. Uh, paint's chipping away already. Right, okay. Tesseract glow needs a good go on the thing that go brr. Come here, thing that go brr. Thing that go brr, go brr. There are three agitators in this thing. I've put three agitators in there. Because every time I go to shake it, I can only I can't hear an agitator, so I forget I put one in. But of course the paint's just thickened up on the bottom and the, the agitator's stuck to it. 
But you look away from this stuff and it needs shaking again, it's crazy. Right, let's get some of this stuff out onto the tray, nice. Okay. And we'll try and get a bit of a glow effect kind of thing going on. Because that's what this stuff's actually good for. going straight over the top of the paint. I normally do this with an airbrush but I did say I wasn't going to use an airbrush and I'm mad at my word. So, but again I'm still being very slapdash with this. Don't want this everywhere, I just want to kind of accent with it. Like I was doing with the uh, the green shade, but you're just kind of creating layers of colour and areas of interest. And, you know, like that from tabletop distance is going to look belting. Raise that panel up a bit, I think. Massive uncut chunk of warp stone. That panel can get raised up as well. Careful with this, it'll work like a glaze as well. And you can just use it to add a different tone. I think we're getting close to as much as we can actually do with the um, the gem there. Here is the thing that I do not understand. This stuff warp stone according to law according to Warhammer law L-O-R-E um, is supposed to be chunks of the Chaos Moon Morslebe uh, Morslebe was in orbit or we presume in orbit we don't know how these things work in, in Warhammer Fantasyland presumably in orbit around the old world and the new world, and whatever that planet was called. I don't think, was it ever given a name? Does anyone know? Answer in chat, stick it in comments. Some Somebody out there will know. If you're watching this after the fact, or you found this out after the fact, stick it in comments. And you know, stick a like and a subscribe on there as well, because you know, I like that sort of thing. But yeah, if you know what the, uh, what the old Warhammer world was called, the whole world, not just the old world, which was a continent, because there was also the new world, and. And things. Um, if you know that what that was called, let me know in the comments. But anyway, warp stone, warp stone was supposed to have come from Morslebe. It was chunks of that. Um, but that doesn't fit with AOS because Morslebe in AOS isn't a thing. Or are, there are things that have come from the old world, but the moon isn't one of them. So I would love to know what warp stone is in AOS. Somebody must know that. Stick it in the comments. I would love to know. Yes, yes. 
Right, okay, I am going to... Ooh. That's never happened before. I dropped something in a shelf, in a, a drawer, and it bounced straight back out again. Use a bit of slimy grime, dark, which is enamel. And because it's enamel, we need white spirit. And I have white spirit. But I'm just going to get this into the crooks and nannies down here. Give that a sense of a sense of moss and, and decay. Um, people are raving about this um, the dirty down moss effect. I've not managed to get hold of that any um, any of that yet, but I'm glad people are getting hold of this this dirty down stuff since I started posting about it on my channel and such. And raving about it, the uh, the entire community seems to have picked up on it. Is now running with it. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a trendsetter in that sense. Retconium, yeah, okay, that works. <laughs> Flangium. It's made of. Oh look, a wizard did it and ran away. Made of stop asking your damn fool questions. <laughs> oh, I'm no stranger to damn fool questions. Some of the questions were dummiest and fooliest. Nice, nice. We do kind of want to dull that down a Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What could we do? We could we could do things, stuff and things. Um Yeah, we do want to kind of knock that colour down a bit. Because if the light is coming from the crystal, you want things that are furthest away from that light, where the light's not able to get to it, being darkest. And in the case of this, I mean, there'll be a little bit of of scattered light, so you'll get some illumination. But you want the fur um, things directly opposite the source of light to be darkest, with something interposed. Anyway, I know what I'm talking about. Thousands would disagree, but yeah, need to darken down those branches. It adds contrast. There we are. Yeah, we'll say it's like, we'll say it adds contrast. There we are. No one can disagree with that. Right. Okay. But we are going to reach for the oil paints. The oil paints are coming out. The oil paints are under the pizza box, and the pizza box shall get heads. Go, pizza box, be over there temporarily until I pick you up and throw you in the bin. Right. Uh, running out of flat surfaces. Uh, right, where are we? What am I doing? That's just on a postcard, what am I doing? Ah, that was it. Um, 
Burnt umber? No. Yeah, actually burnt umber. Let's go with burnt umber. Bit of burnt umber, right? Yeah. Um, oil paint. And we're also going to go with. We're also going to go with a question that Crohn's posted on my Instagram. Insta Instagram? Don't post things on my Instagram. Um, post it on my Discord. I have an Instagram. Check it out. It's cool. Um, right, let's have a look. Ooh, can I actually? Or did I get rid of that? I think I got rid of that. Or did I? I might have done. Yeah, I got rid of that. Um, <sighs> right, I'm looking at the thing. See you, Jamie. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, if you do gold, you mean gold, gold, or yeah. You know, I think it'll look okay, to be honest, but you want to weather it a bit. Tie it in. It'll look okay. Yeah. Go with gold on that. Got a dark gold. And then hit it with some some um, burnt sienna or something. A nice warm, nice warm brown like that. Over the top. Retributor gold, yeah, that'll do. Retributor gold is a really good gold. Um, that is an expensive use for it. I would consider getting some cheaper gold paint rather than using Citadel on something that scale. You crazy individual. Um, what have I been using for gold? I will. I will show you what I've been using as well if I can find it. I've only just started using it, and again, it's an oil, or well, it's wax based, but it's um, AK True Metal Gold. This costs uh, fiver, I think, at the expensive side of things. Uh, it might be three, three fifty, three, three forty nine, whatever, so, something like that. Um, get it on Element Games. Um, I think I put my code up, put the code up for Element Games on the on the description of the channel. If I haven't, I can do that. I'll put it in. No, I can't put it in chat because I can't actually type anything in chat. I will put it in the description of my of my um, of this video because I have a code for Element Games which will get you extra store credit if you order from them. An extra store credit is really good. Um. Yeah, that's what I use for gold. And I also use um, this stuff through an airbrush. But that's kind of a, a light gold. I'll show you what kind of a gold that looks like. Ugh, look at that. But it's a really good gold. Get you hence. Get in that. Right, okay. Right. So yeah, that's kind of a, a light new gold. Let's put it on here. In fact, you can't even see it on that. <laughs> right. what that looks like but it's a really nice gold goes through a, um, an airbrush really well like really well so if I'm airbrushing that's what I use but that AK stuff the um, 
the true metal. Where did I throw it? Yeah, this actually looks like gold because you know it's gold. Because you know it says on the t on the uh, on the tube true metal. So guess what they put in it? That's right, not gold, because that would be massively expensive. Where did I put it? I had it moments ago. I put it down, and it has vanished. How bonkers is that? somewhere. Comes in silver. And that's what it looks like. When you don't spill a thing on it. And yeah. Well, that's going to annoy me. Where did that gold go? Hmm. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Because I have a bolt of shell here. Look at that. And if I were to get about that on a dry brush and put it straight on that. And that gets the point across. I mean, it's just it, it, it's a coat it's a coat of metal. You can actually polish this stuff. It's bonkers. Um, I've been over my um, custodes army with uh, with the gold and just just elevated it. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. So I can recommend that. Um, I'm not sponsored by AK either. They just happen to make really cool stuff that I use. Um, right, what's it doing? Before I was cruelly distracted by the Oh look at the paints that have gone out on your on your palette mode. And then you'll then you'll know. Because we were gonna go with getting some dark brown on there. And we're just gonna wipe this off in a sec so it doesn't need to be mega. most of it off anyway. What this will do is it'll just retone everything and tie everything together and get a bit of differentiation between the tree and the crystal while still retaining that um, glowy feel at the extremes. So it's almost dry brushing it on there. You'll notice I've got some green out there as well, because what this brown will also do is you'll get a fine layer of linseed oil on the miniature, which will enable you to blend like a beast with other oil paints a bit later on. Right. If you have not yet pulled the trigger on oil paints, do so. 
yes they can be messy yes white spirit is smelly you can get odorless thinner or you know you could stop moaning and open a window Blends clean cleaning cloth. And we're just going to go over that. I shall blend everything together and get it off the extremities. And you get some lovely gradation of colour in there. And like I say, that linseed oil is going to get in all over everything, which is going to make our life much easier when it comes to blending later with the, the green. So dip that in the white spirit there. That over there. How are we doing? Half an hour. Half an hour to go. I think we might actually successfully milk this one warpstone crystal for two hours. So I've got a few ideas for things that other people want to see or might want to see. How the um, the plasma glow was was raised by Mick earlier. So I will put the call out once again. If you do have anything, any technique that you would like to see, uh, let me know in the comments or in chat, um, and I will try and see what I can do. So this is just this weird green colour, which is I'm dry brushing over everything, which will blend everything together once I've got the. The one problem with oil paints is that they can take an awfully long time to dry, depending on the thickness of the coat that you've used. It's not immediately apparent, that's just given a that's just tied everything together. Just go in there with this again. And we're going the other way with it now, upwards towards the crystal. So we're blending the two things together, like you would do if you were using uh, acrylic paints and you were wet blending. And you get the two colours, the brown and the green, merging together, and you end up getting a kind of cool, cool glow effect. over pretty much everything. Oh, that's uh, getting there, certainly. Right, so now what we're going to do now is get to turn your bit of titanium white on the side there. Don't need much. I'm going to get a small brush. This is a number zero. Get some titanium white on there. And we're just going to pick out a few extreme highlights just to get some extra colour and interest in there. And not just on the edges, you know, you'll have like a few sort of ridges that will catch light on the inside of the panel as well. Because it's oil, they'll sort of blend together as well. Just dab them.
can be a little bit messy about this because we're going to come in with a clean brush in a minute and do some clean brush blending. Brush. Clean brush blending, which you kind of can do with acrylics, but it works so much better with, with oils. for a sec. Clean brush. Will do. Right. And all you're doing is just sort of feathering that together and it will blend in because the, the green paint around this is still wet. Or at least tacky. And it just blends the colours together nicely. Just leave it white on the extremes but you can Blend it all together. Just by stippling almost around the very extremes and edges. So yeah, oil paints man, get you some. Get you some. They get the job done. Right, 20 minutes left, or I could just admit defeat. <laughs> what else can I do here? What else can I do? That looks like a massive chunk of warp stone to me. Looks like a few other things, but we don't talk about that. It's very uncomfortable, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Not something you'd use more than once. bring this thing to a close because I'm just going to be going over old territory here and just adding more and more to this and it doesn't need it um, this is something you can knock out really really quickly in a lot less time than I've done it um, I literally really have been milking this for content um, because of the state these were in um, yeah, just knock the camera first time I've done that this this stream so you know that that's worthy of note and prose Uh, we'll, we'll gloss over what I did with the camera earlier that caused everything to look rubbish. Um, yeah, that wasn't a thing that happened. Um, and if anyone says it was, then uh, you know they, they are fake news, frankly. Uh, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to draw this one to an early close because I've got an early start in the morning again. Um, so it just remains for me to say thank you to everyone for dropping by. And I will see you all, hopefully, this coming Wednesday with something else to paint once I've decided exactly what that was. So if you, again, next week, if you've got anything else you want, you want to, would really like to see me paint, and if I've got it, stick it on Discord. Um, I'll try and try and do it. So, yeah. Uh, all that remains for me to say is thank you for dropping by. If you've not subscribed and hit the bell and liked and commented and done all that good stuff, please do so because it does wonderful things for the algorithm gods and they smile upon my channel, which makes me smile. So if you'd like to make me smile, poke things, poke things on the YouTube. And, uh, yeah. Right, I think that's about me for now. <laughs> I shall catch you guys on the flip side. Thank you very much for dropping by. Good night to you all. Why hasn't that popped up? Hmm.
Have I broken something? Oh no! Oh no! Where's my end screen gone? I'm not even kidding. Where's it gone? Ah! Ah! I don't know. Ah! Ah! Oh well. No end screen. <laughs> Bye all.